All right, good evening and welcome to the November Board of Trustees meeting. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Here we are. Another month has passed by. <clears throat> COVID, uh, I'll speak to that just for right off the beginning. Uh, COVID again has prevented us from having uh, more public in person meetings. So we're live streaming them to so try to stay in compliance and keep everybody healthy. Um, if you've been following along on the state site and county site, you will notice that Washington County. Um, has had some increases over the last month, and so I encourage everyone to continue social distancing, wearing masks, and uh, hand sanitizing, and, and just uh, doing their best to help uh, prevent the spread. Um, we're going to start off with the open of the snow removal bins. Lance has those. Or it, as it were. Or it. <laughs> We have one bid here, I believe it's from DNR Trucking, Vincent Becchioni. And it's the same as last year, quote, $70 per hour for 2020-2021 for fiscal year snow removal. The equipment rental truck and driver is included, is CDL, registration, and insurance. Okay. That's our only bid. Like I said, this, uh, this is the same as last year's last rate. Year. So um, it's, he asked for seventy dollars an hour, but I'm I'm assuming we do have a budget line. For snow, snow removal, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> do you know how much offhand that was? Uh, no, it's not fair to answer that. I think we get from the state. I think it's eighty, and then we pay whatever. Okay. Yeah, and he Fair only enough. comes in and does it while we're doing the snow removal right. for the state. Right. So that's reimbursed gotcha. from the state. So if we're willing to accept it, the motion would simply be accept bid from VNR Trucking for snow removal services 2020 to 2021 at a Seventy dollars per hour rate, and you said that was the same rate charged last year. Yes, has it been the same rate for a few years? For a few yeah. years, now. Okay. I'll make the motion. Okay, Mr. Steve, I'll second. Okay, yes. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. And Kara, even though we're doing this, even though we're showing this remotely, since all the trustees are here, I don't need to do roll call vote, right? Correct. Since they're all the same. Room. Okay. All right, we have uh, some items for public comments. Um, so I will go ahead and read those off. Mm -hmm. um, this one is from Richard Cherry. Um, and it says, Dear Lance, could you pass, please pass this on to the mayor to be read at tonight's public meeting? And it says, in relation to the public lighting in the village of Cambridge, National Grid has confirmed again, as they repeatedly have, that the Cambridge Village government has the decision-making power for choosing the type of lighting for the village streets. Um, I believe we had gotten an email several months ago to the same effect, which we have information from National Grid that that, that is not, in fact, what they were talking about. I'll pull up the email from Joe Pallone. Um, <laughs> Joe Pallone is talking about what lights are installed, removed, or relocated, um, not to the actual bulb itself. Um, if that were the case, then the village would have converted to LEDs back in 2014 because that's when the village had approached National Grid to convert to LED at that time. And since National Grid did not utilize LED bulbs, they would not convert uh, the village back then in 2014. I remember a previous trustee that, that was looking into that. Um, so that's 
that's the response to that. Um, by all means, Richard, you can reach out to Mr. Cologne again at National Grid to confirm the intent of, of his email, um, that it was not in relation to the bulbs. Um, it was in relation to the actual type of fixtures, whether you want the old fashioned historic fixture or newer modern fixture, et cetera. Um, and then we have another one from Mari Cherry. And uh, it says, this is to be read aloud in lieu of my presence. Uh, to Mayor Bogle, I have learned that my personal and medical details, including my doctor's letter, have been shared, discussed, and ridiculed amongst the co-workers at your office workplace for many months now. I ask that it please stop. It is inappropriate and offensive to me. I sent private information by necessity addressed to you and the village board members. At public meetings, you have been selectively quoting segments from letters sent in previous years, pre-LED conversation, all of which went unanswered at the time. Selective outdated quotes are misleading and misrepresent the situation and sequence of events. I ask you to please stop doing that also. A couple of board members have indicated that they did not see at least some of the correspondence I've sent alerting them to the fact and severity of my lifelong disability and describing the catastrophic consequences of the LED conversion on me and my family. I have resubmitted copies from the past two years and a half so that they can read them now and also note the dates. The questions and concerns they contain remain unanswered and unaddressed. A fundamental aspect of your job as a representative is to hear, listen, and consider a wide array of concerns from your constituents. You should be prepared to evaluate each one based on specifics and the potential ramifications, including ethical ramifications of your decisions. Each constituent should be able to expect open, fair-minded, equal treatment and a timely response. No one should have to fear that their basic human right to life and safety could be subverted by a vote from careless or disinterested elected officials. Your focus now should be only on correcting the condition causing severe harm to a community member, rather than on seeking rationales for leaving those conditions partly or fully in place. There are other ways and choices to illuminate a village. I have no choice about having the disability I was born with. Each of us is ultimately judged by how we treat others over whom we have control. I ask you to contemplate how you control over the lighting choices for the village, over my personal information, and over my correspondence from the past two plus years have led to this treatment of my family and me. Thank you, Mary Ann Cherry. Um, so that is the latest. And since we're talking about it, um, I'll start right off the bat. That first section about learning about our personal medical details, and do doctor's letters being shared and discussed and ridiculed, that is not true. That is not true because we don't have any medical or personal information. The board here has one, one letter from 20, 2010. One letter from 2010, that's all we have. So that is misrepresenting and basically lying that there's information. No one is sitting around here ridiculing or making fun of this situation. We have all taken it seriously. Um, in regards to the board members that had not seen correspondence, yes, there are two board members on this board who were not on this board when the decision was made to convert. Um, the conversion was decided on in February of 2019, and our two board members did not come on for the first board meeting until April of 2019. Um, since you have received copies of all of those communications, yes. Yes. So they have received copies of those communications, but formerly, no, they, they did not. They were not on the board. Um, any Anybody want to jump in on, the, on this letter here? A thoughts and response to it? I would say, I think, as we've all said before, I think we want to, like, we want to come to a resolution to this. There are certain limitations with national grid. So Mayor Bogle, like if it's helpful to sort of summarize that and then Cara, if there's any guidelines from you about like next steps to come to a resolution, would that be helpful? I know we've, we've covered this before, but would that be helpful yeah. for us to all? Yeah, I, I will, you know, also, we also have a petition that was submitted as well. Uh, the bulk of the signers are not even from the village, do not even live here. Uh, petitions. They're, they're great. Actually, this petition does, is not actually a petition because it doesn't have signatures. It has names typed. It doesn't have actual signatures from people. Um, we're not bound by petitions, 
Um, but it also, you know, it's good to have petitions because you kind of know where your constituency is at with an issue. Uh, National Grid, National, and, and this this petition is for the full removal, the full removal of LED lights from the village. It is not asking for just the five. It wants the full removal of the LEDs. And that is not something that we can offer. That is National Grid. The only reason we could offer the five whole change back was because National Grid was willing to do so. Um, so that, that's the area that we're limited in. We can't offer to take the LEDs. They're not going anywhere. They're going to Greenwich now. They're going to Salem. National Grid has said over and over again that we're converting to LED um, because that is part of NYSERDA's program for the year 2030. I just actually got two emails from NYSERDA last week talking about converting, the benefits of converting and the timeline for conversion in communities in New York. Um, so so that, that is where, where it's headed. Um, you know, I, I honestly, I, I don't know what more we can offer to do, um, you know, in regards to this. We, we can't offer something that we have no control over. Um, that's, that's kind of where we're at. And the August, I, I refer the cherries back to the August 7th letter that we sent out from the village. Um, we're, we're asked for some sort of information that correlates the condition with LEDs. Can, um, can the attorney read that letter so that we have it all on record what we've responded? We've responded and asked for, we've responded and asked for documentation from a medical. Not specifically, we, we, what we've let, it's been very, it's very broad. Um, do you have a copy of that letter offhand? I know it's in my... I have a... Uh, it's from August. I have the file. Okay, great. Grab it. Um, it wasn't even saying specific paper documentation. It was saying an opinion, even opinion, asking for a physician to weigh in. Um, so it was very loose in, in what it was asking. And, and the main reason for us requiring that is, is so we have something to back us when the, another resident comes to us over another issue and says, this is harming me, this is hurting me. If we don't stick to a standard, then we're going to have to change for everything. Can you find it? Uh, this is those being put on the spot list. Yeah, <laughs> I know we don't need to put you on the spot. Yeah. I guess what I was asking was we responded. We have. And, um, and as a board member, I've gotten many, many, many emails that are um, very hard to read. One of them was um, accusing me of, of killing her sister. Um, it's out of control, it's out of hand, and at this point, um, we need to see something more. Yeah, so the, the letter that was sent out laid out the two options. One was the um, shields that they wanted to try because that actually was the first thing that the cherry suggested back in January was shields. Um, and then the other is the five foals. And, and this is what we requested. This is the August letter that was sent to the cherries. It says, as a result of the above information, the board wanted to reach out to you to get your feedback as to a possible solution and the correlation between your medical condition and the street lights. Perhaps your medical care provider could offer his or her opinion as to the lighting situation your condition and possible possible remedies. This information would assist in the board's decision to take an appropriate and suitable action, if any, on the matter. And that was the letter that was sent out in, in August. Um, if you check your emails here in a little bit, you'll have another email that was sent prior to this board meeting. It wasn't requested to be <coughs> sent at a public, a public meeting. Um, this one is, is, is beyond what you should be sending to people. It was, I forwarded it to the attorney, um, but, but emails like this don't, don't help. It's not productive. It's not a productive way to engage with your local government. We all appear, we do care, but at the same time, our hands are limited in certain areas. You know, this is something the state wants to happen. They want us to be energy efficient. <laughs> It's not necessarily having to do with saving money for the village. We should save money, but it's about the energy efficiency. LED bulbs are here, and the HPS are gone. Um, and that's... And we don't want to wait. 
Well, we don't own the lights. Right now, we don't own the lights. We can't climb up the pole and change the bulb. So, yeah, so with that in mind, it, and I've just been sitting here trying to, to play this out in my head. So even if they got, quote unquote, the legal or statutory, the, the amount of petitioner signatures that they need from there village is no, residents. There is no petition that can be submitted that would require an action by okay. the board. That's where, that's sort of where I was going. Yeah. Okay. And I guess just to reiterate our legal opinion on this matter is that while we understand the village is bound to um, comply with the ADA, there, is, there are no provisions in, in the Act for municipal lighting, outdoor lighting of this nature. So there are um, no guidelines, no statutory provisions that speak to this type of lighting and what requirements the village would have to comply with in order to be ADA compliant. Um, when the act speaks to lighting, it speaks to um, you know, the location of a light switch and a, and a building and, and things of that nature. Um, but there is no reference to outdoor um, municipal street lights or, or anything of the sort. So um, while you have the discretion to take an action with respect to this item, if you wish, we're of the opinion that there's no allegation um, on behalf of the village to do so under ADA. It has nothing to do with the condition being under ADA, it just there's no guidelines under ADA as to handle, has to deal with um, this way. And we're not disputing that a condition exists. Right. We're right. not right. saying, you know, prove you have a condition, we're not disputing that condi condition ex exists. Right. Um, the condition was present prior to the LEDs. Um, so therefore, how are you correlating that with the LEDs? Because you already did have this condition prior to this point. That's kind of the thing. And, and I searched, you know, the Epilepsy Foundation, when I reached out to them multiple times, even their website, they are not willing to list LEDs as a trigger. They do not have it under their trigger list of triggers. And I had asked the woman from the Epilepsy Foundation, you know, based on learning about this case, etc., do you plan on adding LEDs to the list of triggers? And and she didn't she didn't respond that that was going to be something that was going to be added anytime soon. And to the bulbs they want us to put in are listed as triggers. Yes, the actual fluorescent bulbs are listed as triggers, and the RPI report did find that the light emitted from the original HPS was greater and more severe than the LED bulbs. Um, the, the, one of the other things online I found was it was uh, in uh, one of those celebratory months of photosensitive epilepsy. It was actually a light bulb company or LED manufacturing company that was honoring photosensitive epilepsy and reminding people that the number one trigger is fluorescent bulbs and how LED bulbs are better. <laughs> and that was from a manufacturer of LED bulbs, you know. So it's it, it's. It's a hard, it's a hard one. You know, we didn't go into this meaning to cause a person harm. And I reiterate again, even though she said, you know, in her letter about sharing snippets, well, those snippets of the letters were what we took as fact of why we converted, which was going to happen anyway. Even if we didn't convert, National Grid was already going to at a, a later date. They had already told us that we could just do a one shot where it got it all done in, in one swoop. And the incentive from the state was available during that time. Uh, but that snippet, in the very snippet that, you know, said, I can't tell you that this bulb will trigger me or not. There are some LED bulbs that do not bother me. That was in one of her letters. You know, so when you have information that's limited and, and the person themselves off the get-go saying, I can't say yes or no or tell you if it's going to happen, well, what, what are we left to do? You know, but but the the emails have to stop. They, they have to stop. Um, uh, Trustee Jerry Snyder, and myself, have been trying all month to meet with the cherries, and none of the dates that worked for us did not work for the cherries. Um, you know, the meetings were going to be held outdoors since they cannot meet in the village office because of the bulbs that are still fluorescent. They are not LED. They are fluorescent bulbs in here. Um, so we just we just need some direction on, on what's the best way to go from here. But I I emotionally, mentally cannot take these emails anymore. I just I can't. 
I just can't. And, and you know, I, I will do anything for this village, I will, but this is, we've reached that point that this has become harassment and abusive as opposed to corresponding with your representative. So I don't know, is there any action? You can take or not take whatever action, you know, is, it's, with your, it's with your discretion. There is no law I can point to to say this is what you must do or this is what you cannot do or this is what you can do. Um, under the circumstances, if you chose to, to do one of the, to chase, swap out the five bulbs, you would be within your, your right to do that. If you chose to take no action, you would be within your right to do that. Um, there is there is no governing law under this particular issue. Right, it's a policy, like you said, yeah. back in August. It's a policy. We would be setting a policy. But if we, and not to throw another stick in the wheel, but if we wanted to do what the cherries are asking us to do, so National Grid is saying that that we cannot, they cannot replace all of the bulbs back to HPS bulbs. So what we would have to do is either find another vendor like National Grid to take over the lighting that could do that, which we probably could not do, or we would have to take over the lighting ourselves, <laughs> try to find HPS bulbs, put those in ourselves, and then we take care of the lighting ourselves. And that, that just seems astronomically expensive and just completely not feasible. So I, um, yeah, I, 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 I just, I, I don't know. And then the other option, which is not perfect, but the five bulbs, which would be, you know, not the whole village, but five of them, it would be H H P H P S H P S only until those blue because National Grid isn't making any more. That's within our purview to do, but we need we as a board, correct me if I'm wrong here, we feel like we need to have a, have documentation because of the precedent we're setting. So as long as if we got documentation drawing the line between the condition and the LED bulbs, we'd be happy to take that. Is that something we would, is that a path we could agree to as a board? Like that's that's sort of the missing piece where it's and not that, a it's documentation from, that's a, I'm sorry, from documentation from, from, from a medical, from a, from a, so, I mean, condition. that's the question for us to decide to communicate with them. And then you're saying if we got that, we would eventually do the five. Bulbs. Yeah, that's what I'm asking and are proposing. Uh, well, that would come up for both. So it's in, in, in hypothetically, you know, the cherries tomorrow, if you're watching and, you know, you decide you do want to talk to your doctor and your doctor drafts up a little letter saying, hey, you know, blah, 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 blah. And okay. we receive that, then this board. Drawing a line between the LED and, and the, the condition. condition. The condition. So uh, uh, some examples of correlation. I guess that yeah. would be instead of drawing a yeah, line. I think that's what you've asked. Examples of that's what you've asked for doing. Examples of correlation uh, to that effect. Yeah. Then I would have that letter, and then we would I would say, guys, we have that letter. We're gonna vote. Do we want to convert a five and then we vote and, and do that? And it has to be between because when I understand this, her situation has gotten worse because of the LED. That's what she's saying, but we need to have the doctor say or physician say that that is what's causing the acerbation. Um, it's, it's gotten worse from what she's saying. I mean, we did it, I mean, it was pretty broad, you know, broad area in our letter. We, we left it, you know, an opinion, you know, even an opinion uh, um, would be helped. And then it, it, if we do that, then, you know, when the lights do blow out, then that will have to be addressed again by a future village board at that time. And that would be roughly for years or so. Uh, they it varies a lot. Some HPS can go as long as fifteen. Could be six months. Um, it could right. It could be. It's like a light bulb in our house. It's like yeah. There's no. You, you can't guarantee any any time frame. And and I'll just. I'll, I don't think you can guarantee that those lights would be available again. They right. Won't. Right. Right. And that's what they said. They're not. Well, National Grid explicitly yeah. said they will not do. Well, the manufacturer. Well, see, that's not just National Grid. The manufacturing of those bulbs. Right. National Grid doesn't manufacture those bulbs, but the manufacturing of those bulbs is is going away. Um, Unfortunately, all of it, I mean, it's a great conversation, but it's all moot, right? Because they don't want just the five bulbs, right. they want the entire village. Because they changed that. Right. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I'll read the petition. I'll read what this petition is requesting. It says, 
We, the undersigned, are aware that the installation of public LED lighting in the village of Cambridge has caused an ongoing situation of both physical harm and curtailment of equal safety and access rights for a resident with photosensitive epilepsy. Epilepsy is explicitly covered under the American with Disabilities Act. We're also aware of the short-term and long-term human health risks for every resident now exposed to this variety of lighting. These risks include increased rates of breast and prostate cancer, increased rates of childhood leukemia, eye damage, obesity, sleep disruption, low infant birth weight, and epigenetic effects. We object to this treatment of a local resident with a documented disability and object to the increased health risks for everyone else exposed. Light pollution has long been recognized as a serious environmental problem, and current research shows that LED lighting has five times the negative impact in damaging properties specific to this variety of light bulb. With the public installation of LEDs, harm has been introduced in a way and at a level where it did not exist before. We want it removed. We call for a reversal of the LED lighting and a return to the former HPS lighting, which ensured public safety but did not cause seizures for the disabled resident or increased health risks for the public in general. To reduce costs and pollution, we suggest the HPS fixtures be fitted with motion detectors to come on when needed and go off when not. This was an approach considered, but then rejected by the mayor prior to choosing LEDs instead. Which that is also false. That is not an approach that was ever considered by this board. That was in a passing conversation with Mari in late 2017, early 18, where at that time, we there was no converting on the horizon. We were dealing with other regular HPS lights in the village. Um, and I had mentioned something, oh, I wonder if there's a way with motion detectors, you know, lights go on. And then as the conversation progressed, we talked about the fact that, well, now every time a car or someone walks by, the light's on and off, which is going to emit that flicker that causes seizures among persons with photosensitive epilepsy. So flickering lights is definitely not the route to go. But that was never um, offered to us by National Grid. We have never offered uh, motion detector lights. I would like to add to that this petition it's one on a circular file. There's no evidence at all to LEDs causing breast cancer, prostate cancer, leukemia, obesity, sleep disruption. It's I can give you proof that the world is flat. I can go on the internet and have it for you in five minutes. There is no proof to this at all. And the fact that it was sent to us this way, it, it's it's insulting to me that it was sent to me this way. And, and if this is really her true feeling, then why is her article in the paper complaining about fireflies and not about leukemia? The point. And by the way, there was a ton of fireflies in my backyard all summer long. Mine too. Mine too. I don't think we would be at this point if we would if we would have the cherries could accommodate our schedule to meet. I think this is just all of the um, emails that we've gotten, the threats, the debasing of our intelligence has gotten out of control. Out of control. We certainly wouldn't have been talking about it for this long either no. if we didn't care. So it's yeah. a topic we definitely we have care care, about. We have it's been a, it's been a topic for just, uh, as long as I've for since right January. January. It's January, right. and we have cared. Yeah. We wouldn't have asked to have meetings or try to accommodate <coughs> her schedule. Absolutely. We wouldn't have Absolutely. if we didn't Agreed. care. Agreed. All right. Well, we've we've had our discussion. Uh, to any of those that are watching that have more questions or any of those that have signed the petition that live in the village, I see names on, on here from villagers. You're all very welcome to watch any of the previous meetings if you need more information or as well send your emails to ask more questions. But I encourage you to find out more um, on, on this topic and about what has been going on um, for, for the past several months. You should have a copy, don't you? Can you, have, can you give her a copy? Yes. Uh, everyone should. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's up, like underneath your back. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Oh, there it is. Here. Here's my pre <laughs> oh. So we will we will move along, and I'm sure we will follow up with this probably next month, and and maybe have some you know new information. And to the chairs, if you're watching, 
No, I implore you, you know, we 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 will I will take the, the very minimum of what you may have for any information that comes from a professional physician. Um it, it's gotta come from someone who's who's worked with you as opposed to being something off the internet. Um so you know please consider submitting that and, and then we can move on from here. All right. All right, under approval of minutes, uh, we've got 7 October and 13 October. Uh, 13 October is pretty simple. 7 October, I sent out and I've already incorporated feedback I've gotten from you. Wonderful. Do we have a motion to approve minutes of October 13, 2020 board meeting minutes as written? I'll make a motion. Mm -hmm. I have a second. Steve, no? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. And then the next one is for the October 13th special board meeting minutes as written. So I don't have any questions about the, um, the minutes per se, but actually, so we have, obviously, we have an associate justice, right? Yes. Um, Backup judge. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was curious. So we have a, a really big back. Do we still have a huge backlog? That I don't believe so. Versus? I think they're they they've been they've been doing they've some been... pretty heavy uh, Monday nights. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, are there, uh, is their backlog clear? I'm not sure, but I know it would be whatever whatever DA nights. nights too. I mean, a lot of what they have would be based on the district attorney's office, right. so the ability to come nights. down here yeah. as well, and how many cases they had ready. Okay, so so that would that's actually would probably limit what my follow up question is. If they had such a huge backlog, like why couldn't they have uh, Judge Lucy do Monday nights and then Judge Malia do every Tuesday night? That, just the, get through the I believe thing. that's that's through for the scheduling with like how it works with the interchange between the district attorney's Good office point. and okay. here. So, we, yeah, so public available. defenders. Right are going to be here on the night that they can be in the rotation. We have no command and control. Yeah. Over what goes on. <laughs> it's Fair a lot different. Because the public yeah. defenders are here Monday and then they're at the White Creek office yeah. on yeah. Thursday. Okay. Um, so it's based, based on their schedule. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, the special meeting was to um, to appoint our associate judge who's back up to our judge. Um, and we didn't take care of this in our organizational meeting, but we are adding, we're adding this as part That's of our going to be part of our meeting organizational now. Meeting so we meeting reappoint them every year. So, yep. uh, because the, the 180 days um, from the COVID, whatever date it was, was expiring on that Tuesday. And in order for him to hear the case that he needed to do on Tuesday, right. I think, an arraignment or something, mm -hmm. we had to, to get him yep. back on there because 180 days was expiring that day. Yeah. So, make a motion. Maybe one. All second. Any discussion? All right. I'm going to abstain because I'm going to Yeah, I guess I should probably do the same. All right, all those in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Two abstaining. All right, and then we'll see what we've got all the reports here. From the vouchers, we're looking at uh, unpaid vouchers that would be totaling $15,852.81 and paid vouchers totaling $10,531.50. Is there anything unusual in any of this? Well, not Maybe to leave any, any little notes. Um, you'll see, I mean, Kingsbury sweeping, that's on there because we had, we rented the sweeper. No, that was for no? the chips. What? Uh, that's yeah, all the chip money. The common... Well, no, but it's still an expense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sweeping yeah. is still an, uh, an expense. Yeah. Yeah, how it gets paid, that's different yeah. than, yep. Yeah. Um, that's a different bill. The uh, watch guard video. Digital orders 1868. It's under on page. Looks like it's Which under page? the page. Which page number? Uh, page three of four. Yeah, it's under the yep. page vouchers. Oh, that's our new. Uh, that is our new camera system. Car cam. 
Oh, oh, okay. The body can't. Oh, 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 oh yeah. cool. That would be split build too. It's mm. one can be built pretty much one can be built for the rest. Great. So are we splitting that eighteen hundred with them? Correct. Okay. And how many body cams is eighteen hundred dollars? Two. Two. Very cool. Nice. The folks who want to play carpool karaoke with the police. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For the water, but we pay for the rental of the hydrants from American Water. Mm -hmm. Or thirty-nine hydrants. Yes. Yep. Our thirty-nine hydrants. Yep. Any other questions in regards to the bills? Nope. I'll make a motion. Okay, so we get Steve Howard, make a motion. I'll second it. Steve Roberts. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We'll see less has in there. All the operating statements, year to date for us. <coughs> And he is available available to email if you have any questions in regards to those. All right, um, moving right along, the book of my month is going to spend um, working on stuff for the firehouse um, to get moving to the next step, working with CT Mail. Um, Power gave the all clear for the contract last week, so that has been signed and sent over to CT Mail. Um, and before us tonight, we have from Harkin, which is doing the archaeological. Um, this is a letter of resolution for the mitigation of adverse impacts on the cultural resources within the proposed volunteer fire department project area. Um, this is to satisfy the needs. Um, for the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, as well as the Office of Parks and Recreation. Um, so they need us to adopt this uh, letter of resolution in order for them to submit that. And then they have the all clear to start the RPO work um, out on the site. So I can read it if you all, if you'd like me to read it. Uh, there's a lot of whereases, but I'll... Do we need to read all the Do we need to read all the Actually, I put a motion at the end which should summarize well. Oh, okay. Authorize. Authorize mayor to sign letter, letter of resolution document 07P as in Papa, R as in Romeo, 06537 as written above. These are all publicly accessible. Yeah, these are all publicly Absolutely. accessible. If you wanted a copy to read the, all the whereas is. Um, this is just all the stuff that they have to to state um, in regards. Like here, it has the you know the site number and the uh, talking about the different parts of it, um, the stipulations and um, the protocols. You know, they this is all the things the state needs to see uh, that they are doing, uh, so that way the RDO is done in compliance with those entities. And then Lance also has included the, you can read through the whole, whole rest of these papers are all, all of the uh, Archeo stuff, their whole list of what they had done up to this point. Site mapping and everything. To, to, so to the bulk, of the, bulk of the rest of the packet is all of that information. <laughs> it's a copy of it that was submitted. This is all the stuff we submitted to the state on our behalf. Um, so yes, 
And you said we, we keep copies of this stuff handy for the oh, yeah. oh yeah, this is this is not it's yeah, a public document. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's a public document. But yeah, I, and none of you commented on how thick the packet was tonight. I thought, oh okay, hey, we're gonna think something's up. Yeah, right. And uh, <laughs> most of it is in regard to the RDO. So is someone willing to make the motion is read? I'll make the motion. Maybe you're awesome. <laughs> Any second? I'll second. Yes. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So right. And they haven't extracted the materials yet. No, no, no. They, they can't do that. Yeah, this is all the stuff they had to submit to get pre-authorization from the state to do so. And once I sign this form, then they have the full thing done with the state, and then they can begin. And we'll be able to see pictures or something of what they still they'll actually take probably pictures of everything and catalog it they usually like they if the the old report um from the last time that showed the artifacts mm -hmm. that report lance has okay. a copy of that that you could get and it will have some pictures of the items in, in there in their actual report that okay. they provide us so the artifacts themselves are taken and turned right. over to the state <clears throat> all right Sign up on the boards and right. There we go, yeah. <laughs> All right. If there's any other questions from board members from myself. No, we jump in. We'll go right ahead. Um uh, fire department, Tom is not here tonight. Um uh, we've been pretty quiet for them. Um, I know they did they were able to set up tables outside the firehouse for COVID friendly grab and go for Halloween because they usually have an open house at Halloween time. Um, and they are also doing um, the iRobot donated to them one of those Roomba vacuums to raffle off for a firehouse fundraiser. So if you want to buy raffle tickets for the, the Roomba, just reach out to the fire department. They have those. Um, other than that, they had no items for us to take action on. And Matt, you are up. Pretty much all I have is uh, I'm picking up leaves with the town of Cambridge and the town of White Creek. They've been very helpful. They, they've come in and helped me all, all when I need to help. Um, a couple of rain days, we've been fixing the sander bed chains and the plow trucks and getting them ready. And other than that, I've been doing the leaves. Um, and Mr. Van Hook is asking if he can donate a print. And all the proceeds go to the DPW. Right. Oh, like a raffle for the DPW? Something like, yeah, something he did for like the fire. He wants to do one for the DPW. Awesome. Goodness. And he was asking if he could do permission. The village fire, the fire department could do it because they're volunteer nonprofit. Right. You yep. don't the have raffle. Like, you don't have a, they get through the gaming authority to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So someone, someone else could. Do it Someone else could run the raffle the and then donate the proceeds. So right. Mr. Van Hook wanted to, wants run, to run the raffle, raffle and then donate the proceeds. Yep. All right. And then donate. I'll the let him know. He stopped yeah, me the other day like picking leaves. The community partnership or somebody else like that too. All right. I'll let him know. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> there, there's plenty of community nope. groups. I'm sure would would be willing. Yep. All right. I'll let him know. And uh, we got the uh, the dump truck back with the new motor in it. That's been running perfect. Good. Okay. Now. The, the discussion about the replacement of that is going to be probably next year or so. Um, I, I'm going to send you guys something during uh, in February when we're door by the Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And we we are also still short a DPW full timer. Um, we have put multiple yep. ads out in the newspaper and have gotten back uh, minimal response. Um, we had performed one interview, but then the individual decided that that job wasn't a fit for the individual. Um, so, you know, I, we can, I guess that we can leave it open and not necessarily put it in the newspaper every week, but we are still looking for a full time. Um, we do have a game plan for the winner, though, because that yep. was my concern is, is that now we only have Matt who can run our trucks <laughs> um, because he has a CDL and none of our other staff have a CDL. Um, a, uh, I have a, a retiree from the Washington County yes. Highway Department. He's going to retire the 25th of this month. And he's going to work as the needed basis, plowing snow, 
leaves, anything I want him to do, he's going to be there for me. So we're adding him to our part-time roster and as an as-needed part-time employee. So that way we have another CDL driver for the snow. And he already knows how to run all the all the equipment. He calls uh, for the county highway, so he's already trained. Yes. Awesome. So we will at least be able to get through winter and uh, yeah. hopefully have, have a candidate come for the full-time position. Can I ask you a question? Yep. In the um, EPA process, one of the things that people are really excited about was the sidewalk audit. Do we have a map of existing sidewalks? Or I don't know if we have a map or not. Okay. How would, could we maybe talk offline about the best way to, if you have ideas, if not, we can start yeah. probably just from a map of the village, if one doesn't exist, but I just wanted to. Yeah, ask. I don't know if there's a map here or not, but when I get some time, I could probably go down the streets and measure them and see what we got for sidewalks and go okay. from there. I mean, well, let's, I think part of the plan was to use other people to do the audit, so you don't have to do I it all, it. but. I know my daughter and I did like a, a good chunk of the village on Halloween, so right. we were taking good notes, but yeah. something like that, like we we're actually thinking about maybe we could do it over like a turkey trot type thing, like over, you know, everybody sort of fans out doing that, but um, I don't know if that's going to work. So we can connect offline. All right. Thank you. Yep. And the, the, the weird way our sidewalk law is set up in the village, right, is we wouldn't really keep track of something like that because that's the homeowner's property. Is, is that my understanding? The side, the side streets are. Not the side that streets, that's it. Yes, that's the, it. Main, okay. the, main okay, the main drives, which actually, be, I, I okay. actually have a response from, there were some questions sent to me and also Wayne Creek Supervisor Jimmy Griffith in regards to, so um, the state, so the governor announced, was it last week or the week before, that they're going to be resurfacing from 22 down 313 to Jackson. Um, and someone had inquired about that as a possibility mm -hmm. for throwing in the sidewalks. Uh, is it's a whole separate project for sidewalks. Um, not only that, I'll, I'll read you off here if I can get to it. I got so many emails today, sorry. Because um, she referenced a little bit with the, the state road. Yes, there are sidewalks and roads, but technically they're not. They're not. Right, they don't maintain them. We have to maintain them. Um, oh, it was just this. It was just a few days ago. I'm sorry. I was. I wasn't even thinking about talking about that. No. Um, this was in regards to Abby. Yes. Okay. So this was from Washington County Superintendent uh, Deb. Um, she says, I did some investigating and found that this is not a design project. It is a spot shim and overlay project. So basically the question was, is if they're going to be redoing their thing, can't we have them throw in sidewalks? Because they're going to, but they're not. They're just resurfacing. Um, it's not a redesign of the road. What that means is that the DOT design has nothing to do with this. Um, it was put forth by the Washington County Residency as a paving project. Therefore, the scope of this particular project cannot be modified to include sidewalks or traffic calming devices. Um, that being said, we could possibly approach the DOT with a request, but we'd have to know way more particulars. Um, without the fire department there, right, this, there they would not need a sidewalk at this time. So it had been a looked at about doing sidewalks and when the state last looked at it, they didn't feel sidewalks were needed down that stretch. But now the fire department, is there that could that yeah. could change it? I would totally um, argue with the state on that too. They wanted so DOT DOT nice. wanted DOT wanted to make sure that the village or town understood that they do not maintain sidewalks, um, and it just they wanted to they. She, then she went on to say she does have some questions um, in design, asking whose responsibility. It is with the cost and constructions of sidewalk on a state road and will let us know. So she is asking about right. those questions, how that all works. Um, if you want to put sidewalks on a state road, how does, how does one go about doing that? So those, and those, ideally, we've come out with an audit that says we need sidewalks in like these places, some of which are village owned, some of which are state owned. 
he's like private owned and yeah. side streets are for all private homeowners you have to get their buy-in okay. as well if there's no sidewalk in front of their house at the moment you have to get them to want one as well okay. um so it's yeah it's a lot of little layers those layers that bog things down <laughs> and there's never any clear cut Clear cut, let's just do it type things. You have to get everybody that's involved. It was about market. 10 years ago they tried to do that and they come with a price for the state and we can never could it. never afford it at that time. Yeah. Uh, because while they're palms of 313, we're going to have to have a guy out there just as much as they are because they're going to throw all that snow on our sidewalk. On the sidewalk. And that's the thing too is it's not, we can't it's not keep just Main Street open with the county and the state doing it now. We have more sidewalk. Uh, it's not just the sidewalk, no, it's, just it. it's the overall maintenance, maintenance who's still. plowing it, who's taking care of it over the next, you know, several years. So, but they're, they're looking into that for us with the OT, so that's, that was really good. Thank if, you. If, 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 I, I've heard for a while now about the concern, especially the 13 sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I, I walk through 13 quite a bit as part of my uh, exercise routine. But, uh, you know, maybe that's something where we could look into getting the speed limit lower between East Main and, and 22. I would love that. Drop that to 30 as opposed to 40. I don't know what your opinion on that is. Far. We already put the request in. Mean, I think pretty much when the firehouse referendum passed, I had to send it over to DOT to start. I, it's going to take time because mm -hmm. they'll do their speed study. study. And, that, and that's the thing to understand, too, is that when state or other entities come into play, just because we want it to happen doesn't mean it's going to happen and we have to be prepared for that because they're going to do their traffic study they're going to put down their thing and then they're going to tell us whether they think we need it or not and that's sometimes that's hard it is hard as a municipality because it's like well it's ours it is but it technically isn't you know there's there's that weird overlay but that's been a 40 mile hour right. speed zone since i was a kid I right. mean, when i was a kid there was no health center there was no rescue squad the condominiums weren't there it wasn't the day a lot has the changed day care, like yeah. when the daycare like the daycare which doesn't have pickup or aftercare so kids that need to stay after need to get themselves from the school to the daycare mm -hmm. which for a while meant crossing two streets mm -hmm. with a 40 mile an hour thing with no with no um sidewalks right i think it's like schools are busing them now though they are busing them now because they were able to redo the the point we worked with things on that but it's still like it'd be nice if they could walk the same like, token yeah, they because walk the business is at a location doesn't mean you know that's that's part of choosing so where you have your business. are you telling me the school is busing kids to sunshine but not to our facility Yes. Yes. And I Seriously. well, I don't know about our facility. They're busing them to Sunshine and it's based on the state a, a couple of years ago, it was based on the state DOT, yeah. like you get points for how dangerous it is. So the streets that they have to cross, it was it goes over a certain level. And so they the other option was that the kids had to walk up three thirteen and they were able to to do the analysis with the state to get clearance to bus. Oh. Oh. Just who you know. The last study <laughs> was 1999 by DOT on the 1999. So a lot has changed since 1999 yeah. on that stretch. There's a lot more development there than there used to be. But from that study, they determined there's no reason to decrease the speed limit. Yeah. I just 99. The whole wasn't I just don't understand what I mean. What what is stopping us from taking this? The Speed limit sign down, putting up a new one. I mean, because we don't own that stretch. Do we want to pave that stretch of road from now on out? I mean, is that, is that what would happen? I mean, that, the, 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 the state would right. transfer ownership of the road. Well, over they're not going to transfer. Right. Speed 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 so, like for instance, on Academy, we dropped that down to twenty-five <clears> uh, three years ago. Right. We sent in the thing that we were doing it to DOT, and they were aware of it, but we didn't have to necessarily get their permission because it's our road. It's we right. pave it. Right. We take care of it. We do everything with it. It's I can't hang up a sign a at state. the intersection of Academy and, and 372. It's going on their road. They have to uh, set the stop sign up. I can't do it. If I set up, I take full responsibility if a car hits it. And, wow. and it's, our purple, yeah, our yeah, and, and our purple hearts our purple signs are, stop, are so. still in the office oh, yeah. because the Crazy. state needs to install them, and then the state's going to pick. We want it at our entrances, but they're going to pick the point of where it goes based. Go. On, on, so they're not blocking uh, 
lines of sight. Lines of sight, yeah. With, with traffic. Because they, they take that responsibility. There's an accident and someone says, ah, I can see that car coming to that sign was in my way. No, no. The state is taking responsibility for that as opposed to us. If they handle that and install those. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of those government layers. Government layers. Yeah. The government is truly like an onion, you know, one layer to next to the next and the next, and and the, the situations of overlap. Did um what we sent to DOT? Did we only talk about the stretch between um, Main Street and um, and Park, or does it go all the way up to Spring Street, the full stretch of three thirteen? I don't village? think it had to specify, did it? On I your... think it was within those limits. Okay. okay. Yeah, was, was, uh, was uh, the request that we put in for a reduction along three thirteen. I just stated all of. Yeah, we didn't yeah, necessarily put a, because if we can do it all the way to the... <coughs> oh, yeah. I know several residents who would love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, we can't just say, like, we, we don't have anything on the books that says, like, there is no speed limit within village limits, you know, over 30 or over 25. Like, we can't, we can on the parts of the road that we control. Right. We do not control 372, 22, or 313. Those are state highways. They have control. Even though they come through our municipality, they are still owned by the state. We do not own those. We maintain or maintain them or take yeah. responsibility for them. Yeah. Yeah, you don't truly own everything that's within your yeah. boundary. Oh, and I just like, don't want people like keeping through it. So there's your boundaries if you don't own it, technically. So, yeah. Yeah. People that don't want there's a lot of people right around there that would like it to be lower. Oh, yeah. Much lower. Sure. It's our only stretch that's not. Yeah. It's the yeah. only stretch. No Are there stretches like that? Other stretches? Oh, we don't need to keep going down. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure we could talk. <laughs> I'm not going to have to I don't have any information. All right. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you back. Mm. All right, Police Sergeant Zanko, you were up, sir. Uh, for October, we had, actually had a pretty busy month. Uh, we had 26 cases reported to the Department of General Justice. 16 people were arrested for a total of 92 for the year. Um, we handled 59 calls of service for 489. Two motor vehicle accidents for 16 for the year. We had 50 traffic tickets issued for October for a total of 266 for the year. And below our, our arrest, that lead up to uh, the 16th. And um, I have toy boxes out now for the Operation Santa with the high schools. Um, so they're out and about in local businesses. We're trying to build them and get them out there in many locations as much as possible. Did you try to get lots of them? We have, we have one in there. Awesome. Wonderful. Are you going to have one here? Are you going to have one here? Yeah, I need to buy some boxes because the school was giving us the boxes, but they ran out. So, because they've been supplying us for I don't know how many years. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I need to go get some more boxes. <laughs> and we'll have one in the village offices. And uh, depending on the COVID climate, we might try to stand out in front of big lots like we have to do for uh, Kmart. Uh, the, the Wonderful. Yeah, I was speaking. I don't know if you noticed. Um, I think it was going to be in the newspaper. I didn't check this past week. Um, so the gazebo was severely damaged. Um, was it two weeks ago? A week and a half ago now. Yeah. Um, but fortunately, Christina happened to be at the library and heard the commotion going on, so she called the PD, and they were there, able to arrive um, with the minor persons that were present doing the damage so we do have responsible parties um, for that um, and the damage is, is pretty severe every spindle along the one stretch of the railing is gone um, so we'll be working on a game plan for restoration i know there was some discussion about alternative means of restoration by other individuals so we will we will go forward with that um, so I just encourage, you know, parents, make sure you know where your kiddos are and make sure you know what they're doing and who they're hanging out with. And just remind them that, you know, there's there's artifacts around this village that have been here since before the incorporation of the village. Um, and that these mean something to, to our community. And 
um, that to please have respect for them. Um, yes, they are sitting on library public property that's accessible to the public, um, but we, we would hate to have to take the gazebo from that location and put it to a private location that would be protected. I mean, I, I don't even know how we would do that. That was a, such a big project to move it there. Um, but a number of residents are very concerned to see it damaged to this extent. Um, and, you know, just everybody stay vigilant and, and be on the lookout. Uh, and if you see something, report it, say something. So, did, I'm sorry, did you say it was a minor? Two yeah. minors, that were, minor. yeah. So, I'm guessing it's going to go to family court and not the <clears throat> village court, but could a judge, like, force them to... Like they can work working? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they can. That's yeah. been, that has been discussed. Okay. That's, Absolutely. That's cool. I believe that's the plan. Uh, well, we can't really speak. I mean, they never destroy it again if they had to rebuild it, right? I mean, that, that was their learning. work. Community yeah. service has always been yeah, an option that for sure. Family Court likes to utilize. So mm -hmm. that could very well be the case. In this yeah. Case, right? so. Yeah. And, and when I say minors, we're not talking teenage children, we're talking younger. So. It's, it's very sad. So yeah. please, you know, parents, please know where your children are and what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, just a quick question, Sergeant Baco. Um, 50 traffic tickets, that's that's a lot for a month, isn't it? Do you know if it was like mostly speed tickets? <laughs> and stuff? Uh, yes and no. Some were multiple tickets for one person. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Um, you're welcome. You. Thanks. And then he goes to the youth report and there, um, going along smoothly with after school, um, following the COVID procedures and protocols and lots of hand washing. <laughs> um, but so far so good and there have been no, uh, no, no cases in regards to our program there. So we had um, Surf Pro come in and clean the building out before any kids came in, right? No, we no, did not have Surf Pro. We did that in house. Oh, yeah. okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, they're um. So when you go to the Forward New York page for each, there's sections for everything in Forward New York. I'm, I'm actually sick of that site right now. But. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to say there was no requirement that a childcare facility had to be professionally cleaned okay. by an outside party. Right. They just wanted to, you know, as long as you utilize this, 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 clean this, this, and this. They, so we did not have a checklist of what needed to be taken care of before the opening of after school in September. Yeah. All right, assessor. Uh, just executive session material. Absolutely. Zoning enforcement. Uh, did you put that in here a lot? Yeah. I, just, yeah. I got it late, so I just put oh, it right there. We got it. It's pretty right. straightforward, mostly ORCC signs. Yeah, so most of it just stuff that's going through county. You got ZBA and planning board, neither had a meeting. Yeah, got a meeting. Pretty quiet month for them as well. Story and report you should have in there. Attorney. Um, I don't have any report except for this. All right. Thank you. And I think it has the library info there as well. Browse through that. And clerk. All right. Okay, I'm going to be transmitting all of our tax. Uh, Tax stuff up to county at this point. I think we have our final tally in here of what was collected. And uh, our final collection, we collected 92.9% .9 of, uh, of what we uh, intended to collect. The rest will be re-levied onto town and county tax bills. So, uh, successful year. Uh, registrar, uh, just 20 birth and death certificates, vital records uh, completed. I've taken over submitting the CHIPS uh, reimbursement paperwork from Les, and that has all been submitted. Okay. Uh, looking to potentially get about 76 grand reimbursement from the three different programs, including CHIPS. Um, however, I've been told that when they actually get around to it, it may end up being about 75 to 80 percent based upon the way things are going in the state. Yeah, out. yeah. Exactly. 
Uh, let's see. The village court report is attached. Uh, congratulations. We are now in the window for the 2021 elections. <laughs> so you see a copy of the announcement that I'm going to put out, uh, which by, uh, by uh, law, I need to get it out in the next week or so. Uh, I guess uh, Steve Halleck and uh, ADS there, you're uh, in the uh, re-election window, conceivably. Uh, we, this will be our first election where we will be putting our justice up for a four-year term as opposed to doing a year-by-year -year until Phil Sika's unexpired term was completed, God rest his soul. Uh, and the mayoral election will be in the spring. Absolutely. Two years goes fast. It does. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, pending your question, uh, pending your question, that completes my report. So um, I have just uh, just a question, just to end things. If no one else has any questions, so we talk about um, the side the sidewalk issue. Um, there's a village law um, regarding sidewalks. Now, is that is that village law within state law, or is that the village of Cambridge's own law, set of laws? That was the village of Cambridge's own law. Gotcha. Um, because the state doesn't provide sidewalks apart from their state road, or doesn't help kick in the money, like you can't get money, because sometimes that's how the main, like the main street uh, project, what year was it, 2013, 2014? 14 when they redid the stretch of sidewalk in front of IGA and on that whole corner. I don't know if you remember that. Sure. That was all done through sure. the state with, with state funds um, that that was taken care of. Um, but they only do that along their road, meaning the rest of the village, all the side streets would have no street, no sidewalks. And then over the years, since, you know, whatever, whenever the first person built the house in here back in the day, they had their slate sidewalk in front of their house, and this one had this in front of their house, and this one. So the sidewalk kind of happened organically by each individual person wanted to stretch in front of their home type of deal. That's kind of how they sprang out. And then at some point, when sidewalks became a more standard form of thing to have, then they started making a more formalized thing to do it. Um, the, the village is long. Forget the year. It's, was it 70s or 80s that they passed the sidewalk law? Uh, I've got a whole bunch of laws. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm not going to hit you. You can pull it, though. So, um, I, I appreciate it. was passed that. because, in, in theory, there was no way the village could ever afford to pay for every sidewalk in the village. Gotcha. Um, that, that would be too cumbersome. But they didn't want to prevent sidewalk from happening, so that's where they had that section that said, if you, the homeowner, pays for the equipment, the supplies, the, you know, the, all the materials to do the sidewalk, the DPW can provide the labor um, to do that. So some have come about over the years, the DPW has laid those sidewalks um, and converted some from slate. And they were, concrete. yeah, they were, in the most of the spots, they never had sidewalk. And if I go and I start ripping up slate sidewalk, it's not going to be nice. Yeah, but I mean, the people come out, they're going to call, they call the cops, they want yeah. news channels. They don't want your slate ripped up. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. It's such an interesting, it's so fascinating. Yes. It's like the love of the slate. They love it. So very so slippery. slippery. It's so slippery. Yeah. Yeah. And then they call me oh, during a rainstorm and says it's slippery. Well, what do you want me to do? Yeah. So okay. put it up and, and then on like so Spring Street, at the end of Spring Street, going toward 313, one of the there's a lot of new homes happening mm -hmm. in that area. And one of them had reached out to me and I went on and met them and they were talking about a sidewalk. And I said, Oh, well, you know. Yeah, here's how the thing works. If you provide all this, you know, paper, everything basically, you, you can have it put in, um, and it would match up. It's going to go, and then we were talking about where is it going to go. Well, there's already sidewalk started on Spring Street. So, well, it'll run right along. It'll match up with where it is. And we have to cut your trees. And they oh. do not want to lose their trees in their oh. front yard. So they often do not pursue the road to keep their trees <laughs> because so. it has to be built. So you have to remember that under underneath underneath. Just the road and sidewalk is infrastructure. You've got mm -hmm. the American water stuff going mm -hmm. underneath there. So the sidewalk has to be built in a way that doesn't make it on the water lines and allows the hydrants on the roads to flow. So people are losing a significant section of their front yard 
by wanting to do a sidewalk. And that's why this one family opted to say, no, we don't want to lose our trees and we don't want our large yard to be now chopped in half to line up with the main sidewalk that's going down. Gotcha. So, yeah. So I, I appreciate that, that history, but the, the main question that I was asking is the sidewalk law is within the village of Cambridge's own book yes. of laws. Yes. So our, also within that book of laws for just the village of Cambridge is the um, the the term lengths for for the mayor. We do not have term limits in the village. Term the, lengths. Term the, the lengths. Length. So yeah. like yes. years, is yeah. that is that within the state laws village mm -hmm. law or is that within New York, York law? There, there is a section of village. New York law, and I would sooner defer to our yeah. attorney here, right, right. which is called. Village, yes, basically, yes. Village and that's village. what I'm talking right. about. Our term lengths within that part Keep of your state term law. Office. Yeah, those are set out by village law. Oh, okay. Law. Okay, so if we wanted to extend the length of the mayor's term terms or the trustees, if we wanted to go from two years to four wow. years, do we change just the village of Cambridge's laws, or are we able to do that if we wanted to? I don't. I don't know. There's certain provisions. I'll have to take a look. There's okay. certain there's certain positions you can change, and certain ones you can't. I don't know offhand. Okay. You can change. I think we. Or mayor. I think we can because in the village agreement, which I believe the That's mayor right. and council She's members are four year terms she over is. there. Right. Um, so there are some villages that utilize four, and some that do two. There's you when it's when it's able to be done. There's usually a timing requirement as to when you do it how you the mechanism in order to do that i don't know if it requires it might it probably requires some sort of referendum I that, that was going to be the question yeah, we couldn't just do it by resolution right. 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 yeah gotcha. gotcha i mean i can look at i can hear it no i i was just thinking about it i i, I don't think there's any real need to extend terms but yeah i was just curious i mean sometimes you know I think too when you say four years to somebody as opposed to serving two years, sometimes people are more interested in two years because you think of four years as being such a long time. That's a huge commitment. Whereas maybe two years is a little more manageable. Two years. But is when you're, yeah. but when you're, if you're that you're that that's just right. crazy. Yeah. Right, but then when you plan on sticking around a little bit and you're in multi, you're running every two years. That sometimes is burdensome too because it's like, well, like my case, I'll serve six years when we hit March. So I've done three terms, you know, maybe that would have been better suited to have one for your, you know, for your blocks, you know, and, and then there you go. Um, but it's, I think it's a preference of a municipality. Yes, absolutely. Preference of the municipality is pretty much that's how it goes. But so I'm sure. Mayor's office, I see it. My, my issue with the trustees would be that in my experience, a lot of trustees, I initially got on the board because I was appointed to somebody quit. You initially got on the board because you got appointed because somebody quit. No, she ran. She oh, I thought you were. Uh, Scott Lucy, though. Scott, Scott Lucy, Lucy was. Um, yeah. Kate? Yeah, Kate. Mm -hmm. And then Alan Dupuy. So someone doesn't fulfill their term. And it always term. seems to happen that yeah. somebody's just like, I've done this for a year and a half, I've had enough, I'm done. Yeah. The guy I replaced, I ran against him in an election, lost by a couple votes. Two months later, he quit because he didn't feel like dealing with the politics on the board. Why did you run? Yeah, <laughs> right. That's the hard part. And and turnover, you know, turnover. Um, you know, Steve is has been the longest longest one on the board with with me. Um, you know, every let's see when you guys came on last year, you were trustees seven and eight that I've worked with yeah. since I've been there. And sometimes, you know, that's hard too because you're always bringing people up to speed. About all the you know the issues you know so some, sometimes it is it, it's it's kind of a preference thing you know um, four years two years how do you want to do it I I would think if 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 village elections were you know like like city elections where you actually had to you know fundraise and raise funds and spend an obscene amount of money on your campaign every two years you know but here it's pretty rural I mean we have to get our signatures and. We get on the ballot and then we, you know, do some minor signs maybe and campaigning loosely with flyers, etc. Um, but we're not running a full fledged campaign Talk as in some other it. communities, you know, have to. So yeah, so something to think about. 
Any other questions before we move on to executive? Yes. <laughs> All right. So we have a motion to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing current litigation and other legal matters pertaining to the village. Okay. I'll second. And a discussion. Yeah. Discussion. Does anybody really want to discuss? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? This is why you're deputy mayor. <laughs> All right. We should be back. All right. Welcome back. All right. We do have one item to handle uh, coming out of executive session um, in regards to sick time, vacation time, girls, and a modification to one of those. Uh, so, Car, how would you how would you so, like that? Um, the resolution would be to authorize 148 hours of sick time used by Matt Tolan to be reflected as vacation. Paul. That's his name. That's his actual legal yes, call. Okay. Oh, Paul. Yeah. Sorry. No, I, I, I know you didn't leave Paul. You didn't know that. I just, yeah. That's okay. I, I just re reorganizing them. His official hired name. Sorry. Yeah. I'll uh, make a motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, do, can you just um, shoot that over to Lance yes. uh, on how it's worded? I'm just going to look at notes. You made the motion, right? Yes. Okay. You should leave that for Lance. And Alex. And then we do ask the call here. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll give them the motion. I'll second. All right. All those in favor? All right. Aye. 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 All right, thank you so much, everybody. Have a good Thanksgiving.